Good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome to uh, Exercises for Seniors. And it happens to be Canada Day, July 1st, 2020. And it's a beautiful, beautiful day. It's For us, it's around uh, 9 o'clock in the morning here. We're trying to do the workout before it gets too hot. And I'm at Brian's house again, and this is Brian. Just in case you don't know Brian. How old are you, Brian? Oh, don't keep reminding me. 79. So I don't he's, feel the 79, but I am. He doesn't feel 79, but he is 79. But the great thing is that he's out here doing the exercises. Because he wants to live as long as possible, even if he says he doesn't. I do. I want to live forever. Yeah, yeah. I want to live forever, too. In fact, I told my daughter the other day that I was old and she said people live till they're 110 now and i thought how many more years is that <laughs> <laughs> anyway uh, so we're going to start with a warm-up <laughs> wow. this is the warm-up and if at any time throughout the whole workout if you have any difficulties you can sit down and watch. You can just slow everything right down. And if you have any pain, stop. So we're gonna do two step touches in a minute, not yet. Going that way and then two back and we'll just do two in, two in a row here. You ready to go? Not yet. Let's go, two step touches right here. One, two. The reason we do two-step touches is because we're going to do a grapevine, which is the number of beats that two-step touches has. And grapevines are great for your hips. Let's try a grapevine right here. Step, step behind, step, touch. Warming up the hips. We're already warming up the arms um, and, of course, the shoulders. One more. Just one single step touch back and forth. If you're trying to figure out what you're warming up, just watch your body and you'll know. You're not talking so much today, Robert. Well, this is Canada today. I'm listening to your tunes. Who sings that, Brian? Mamas and the Papas. Kick the butt. Pass Elliot, right? Yeah. Didn't she choke or something? Yeah, on uh, on her food. <laughs> well, she was three or four hundred pounds. Let's change this to an adductor. That means shove your legs out to the side and keep them stiff. Keep going. I don't know what song's coming next, but it'll be great. <laughs> Let's tap in front. When the night has come. Who sings that? Benny King. How do you know all this stuff about music? Because I grew up with it. Where did you grow up? London, England. Step behind. Cross over the arms and the legs. London, England? Yeah. What age were you when you came to Canada? 68. You were 68 years old when you came here? I've been here 50 odd years. Oh, you came in 1968. Yeah, so uh, I've been here a third of how long Canada's been Canada. Reach and tap. And why did you come to Canada? Why not, uh, why not the United States or a place somewhere else? I saw an ad in the English newspaper, the national newspaper. They, I'm a tool and die maker, or I was, and they wanted tool and die makers in Canada. So I said to my then wife, do you want to, I'd like to go to Canada? She said, sure. Keep your legs out in front. So I sent away a letter. There's no emails in those days. And I traveled up to London. I got interviewed and I had a, they offered me a job within two minutes. Let's see, 
That's how it started. And you were happy you made that decision? Yeah. And how many years have you been here? Uh, since 68. And uh, any regrets? Uh, no. Ever been back to England? Oh, yeah. I went back for a couple of years. So... One more. I went, hold it, hold it here for a second. I went to work in the States. But then I got laid off, so I went back to England for a couple of years, and then I answered another ad in the paper and came back again. Been here ever since. Come up slowly. Good, now that's the warm-up. We're going to go right into the shoulder. Let's just put one foot out in front of the other, but I'm trying to line up my heels so that they're right like in, on the same board here. And one foot's on 45 and the other one's straight ahead, right? I'll pull over, do and then I'm just reaching out oh. with my arms and stretching one arm back and one forward. You know this, we've yeah. done this before many times. Yeah, I do it downstairs when you're on the TV. Right, and it's a core warm up, the core muscles deep inside your body too, because it's a balanced thing. You can feel like you might fall over as soon as you put your legs apart. That's for sure. All right, so it's good for the core muscles. Oops. <laughs> yeah, just take your time. Now, after I've done a few of these reaching forward, I just turn and do a little bit of a twist. So I bring this hand here to the side and push the palm and then twist and look at the garden or wherever I am in my house. Just do a little twist. Warming up the muscles on the sides of your body and your low back and lots of other parts of your body. And once I've done a few twists like this, I'm just gonna reach down and come back up. Let my arms go wherever they go and bend forward. So believe it or not, we started the shoulders. Then one more. Good, and switch sides, so this one comes out in front, that one's on a 45, and just reach. And really reach too, like really reach way out there in front and way out there in the back. Who's singing that one? Roy Pretty, Orbison. Roy Orbison, one of my all-time favorite performers. I saw him at Lulu's when he came up here. Little Lulu's at the time. You ever watch like America's Got Talent? All the time. Well, it was on last night. Let's do a twist. So push our palm and twist. That's it. Push. Just twist. Did you, you did you watch it last night? I watched it on the YouTube. Yeah. So, did so you, I wouldn't have seen the latest one. Oh, well, watch it because there's a girl on there who's, I think she's 12. I've seen the, what, from Canada? No, no. This girl's not from Canada, but... She comes on near the end and she's a country and western singer and she plays the guitar and she's 12 years old and I think she was the best. They had some great ta uh, acts on there last night but I think she's the best. Let's reach forward and back. So we're bending forward. Whatever happens to your arms is good. Bend forward. Anyway, she was wonderful. Some of these youngsters are brilliant. Yeah. There's a nine year old girl from the Netherlands a few years ago. She sung opera. She taught herself on YouTube. Wow. And she won the she won the competition. And now she's singing opera all around the world. Wow. Well, this girl, I think, is going to win. But, of course, I always say that. Okay, relax for a sec. And anytime you need water, did I bring water? I did. I brought water. You take a swig. Okay. We're going to do our swimming. So don't worry about the feet. You can do whatever you want with the feet. But you're just going to swim and do the front crawl. Tossing and turning. I guess you miss uh, the YMCA swimming. I do miss the pool at the Y. And how many reps do we do of each of these exercises, Brian? Depending on what it is. Ten, anything from eight... 10 or 20. Well, let's go backwards then. Yeah. You say 20 and we usually land up doing 40. Yeah, so I don't think that's important too much to do a certain number. 
and you're right it depends on what body part you're trying to warm up or work on or whatever just as long as you cover the whole body and try to make sure your form is the best you can get so we did the front crawl we did the back stroke now we're going to do the breast stroke so i'm going to put my feet together and do a little bit of a squat as i push forward and pull the water back so i'm breast stroking in the pool and i'm doing a little shrimp squat with my knees over top of my feet i think i tossed and turned all like all night last night because my cat was restless and she kept standing on my head and meowing. Really? Yeah. If I put her outside the bedroom door and shut the door, she scratches at the door and meows. She but needs a let treatment. Yeah, that's for sure. One more. Then I'm going to do the butterfly. So I'll just stand up here like this. So my arms are out here and I'm just going around in a circle. Butterfly, right? And when you're doing this on your own, some of these exercises, you can get inventive. Like for example, I'm not, I'm worried about my shoulders here, but I, my legs need to do something too. So I don't know. I don't know, just move them a little bit. Let's go the other way and then we'll do 10 of these. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Good. Do you have one of those garden poles? Yeah, we got, I got one too. I brought another one, just in case. So, you can stand. I'll stand in the front, you can stand in the back. But basically, we're going to put it in front of us with our hands really wide. Because okay. we're going to do the unhinge. So we lift it up and bring it down to our belly button, up, up over our head. The whole idea is to keep the arms straight, work in the shoulder joint. And once we get going here a little bit, we'll go back a little bit past our head. So we go back past, here. there we go. And remember, we're all different. So if you're just at this stage here, that's okay. If you can come up to the top, that's, that's okay. Me at the top. And if you can go past the top, that's even better. Because eventually, you might not think you can do this, but if you did enough of these, your shoulders would loosen up, your synovial fluid would start flowing in the joint there, and you'd be able to go all the way back down to your low back, from your belly button, all the way around to your low back. Eventually. I do a lot of these during the day, That's because funny. I'm always out in my garden, and I've got a pole somewhere, and I see it, and I think, hey, I should do the unhinge. Two more. One more. That's brutal. It is brutal. So now we're going to put it behind us. Remember the fire pole? So we hold on to the pole with it vertical behind us. And then what I do is I try to bring my hands together. Let's see how close I can get them. My wife has been practicing this so much that she can actually touch her her, her fingers and then I when I go to the top I go as high as I can go and as low as I can go I'm not far away here touch you. can you let's see turn around yeah you're not bad so your shoulders are in pretty good shape so now I've got it as high as I can go and as low as I can go and then when I'm ready I'm gonna try to go down again I'll just do it three times so how close can I get those fingers and back up to the top Remember, if you don't have one of these garden poles, go get one. <laughs> I mean, you're not that cheap, are you? Come on, go get a garden pole. You can afford a couple of bucks. Yeah. And if, you, if you're saying, Robert, be quiet. I don't, I don't want to go and get a garden pole. Well, then use a broom. Okay? You and we do these, one more. A bit longer. Yeah, it's got to be long, though. Otherwise, you're going to really, really uh, have problems with your shoulders doing it. Okay, that's good. The garden pole, or the garden pull with the uh, fireman slide that's called okay I gotta turn it around though because I got two sides to my body so I'll reach way up and then when I'm ready I come close together way up 
and then close together. Just three of them. Unless you want to do ten. No. Way up. And then close together. I can't do this very close. Okay. Now while we're there, let's get it behind us and hold on to it a comfortable way. So maybe my palms are facing the front. And get my legs apart a little bit and then just lean lean over and as I lean over to here, I lift them up and see how high far I can bring them. So I'm staying in the lean over position, the bent position, and I'm lifting the pole forward. Arms are straight, wide grip. Do you see any screws in my deck? No, you did a great job hiding them. I don't know. You must have crawled under it and screwed it up from the bottom. No. But how'd you do it? Yeah. Oh, wait a minute. I see little baby ones on That's the, the end. I is, recommend them to anybody. Is there just baby ones on that end and on down the there? On the edge, on the edge of the planks. That's very cool. Okay, let's slowly come up. Slowly, it's your back, remember? Good, bring it around to the front one more. Watch that bird feeder. So I get it wide again, Brian, and then what I just do is I go around the world, okay? Of course, one way and then the other. Let's try the other way. It's good. Now, if you know anybody that has any shoulder problems, get them to do some of these but be careful because if they don't have healthy shoulders their range of motion won't be very good so they got to start off with little movements and then work up to something like what we're doing good work okay good can let's just hold it on the bottom for a sec and let it be vertical that's pretty good eh yeah. And then just take it and let it come horizontal. And then back up again, vertical. What um, body part do you think you're working? Yeah. yeah, the forearm, the wrist, the elbow, but they're all connected to your shoulder. Your hand is connected, believe it or not, to your shoulder through your arm. So this one seems ridiculous, but it isn't. Especially if you decide you're going to put a weight on the end of it. I don't know, maybe you could jab that orange you got there. And that would add weight to the end of it. Let's try the other side just for fun. We're just sort of having a little rest here. So my elbows close to my obliques, my side. And my forearm is supposed to be parallel to the floor so my, I don't take my arm down like this I just keep it like this elbow to wrist parallel to the floor and then bend and come back up so to do the shoulder we did the, uh, you know, the reach out, turn to the side, bend over. We did that at the beginning. And then we did the swimming thing, the swimming three or four. And then we did the bar here, the pull and the unhinge and all that. So those are three good shoulder things. All right, so we're gonna move on now to our hips. So we're gonna do our hips, but you know what? As soon as we work our, our hips, we're working our legs. And as soon as we lift our legs off the ground, we're working our core muscles because it's all about balance. Right. So you could call this section the balance section, or you could call it the hip section. doesn't matter to me. Okay? But basically, and we've got no chairs today. We're not holding on to anything or anybody. We're going to lift our leg up as high as we can get it. And then we're going to push it back and touch our toe and then lift it up. We're going to do it 10 times on one side. So we're going to go up, toe tap, up, knee up, straight leg toe tap, stand tall, one up. You can do whatever you want with your arms. If you want to be um, 
Houdini and you're going over Niagara Falls and you're holding on to that big balance pole so you don't fall. That's what the arms look like. Or you could just stand here and go, I don't want to fall. So I lift my knee up as high as I can get it and toe tap at the back. Just three more. Time flies when you're having fun, right? Always. And one more for good luck. Just in case I didn't count right. Okay, let's try the other side. So I can feel it already. I was balancing on this leg to lift this one up. So I'm working both sides of my body, believe it or not. Here I go, up, push back, tap, up. How are you doing, Brian? I'm not lifting my knee, but I'm stretching back. Good. So Brian's adapting the exercise to himself, which is great. See, at the end of the, the day, he can say, well, what did I do today that was productive? Oh, I exercised in the morning. That's what this COVID has done for me. It's forced me, even though I did go to the YMCA every day, two more. One, two, good. Other side. So this time, Brian, we're just gonna lift our knee up and take it to the side and bring it back and put it down. So we're going up, hold side, up and down. Good, you can still see Brian, good. So we're gonna do 10 of those. So we go up to the side, up and down. And if you think that's just way too easy for me, I'm not gonna put my leg down at all. I'm just gonna do them one run after the other without putting my foot down. You can go as fast as you want or as slowly as you want. Just do 10. Let me just check Brian and see if he's doing it. Yep, he is. As soon as he turns his leg out, he's working the hip flexors and all the hip parts. Okay, and when he's ready, he's gonna do the other side. And down, or up, out to the side, up, and down, but don't touch. Up, out to the side, up, don't touch. Up, out to the side, up, don't touch. Or else just up, out to the side, up, out to the side, as long as you do 10. Got to make it worthwhile. Working the hips and your core muscles for balance. Pretty good, now we're switching sides again. So what we've done is we've done the up and back. We've done the up and out to the side. And now we're gonna lift their leg up and we're gonna do circles. So my leg's in the air, I'm flexing my foot there. Let me back up a little bit. My foot's flexed, all right, and I'm just gonna make circles. One, two, three, four, five, go the other way. Six, seven, eight, nine, love the music, 10. Let's try the other one, one, other side when you're ready. So I flex my foot. That means pull the toe up toward your nose and then make circles, one. So if you're way out here, it's harder. If you're close to your other foot, it's easier. You decide, just do 10. Three, four, five, go the other way. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Good, 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 good. Now we're gonna just stand there and we're gonna take our leg out in front of us and we're gonna just go back and forth in front. One, two, three. Leg swing, swing, swing out in front. There's five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Other side when you're ready. So it's out in front. The higher, the harder. Just keep the legs straight. So one, soccer kick, two, three. Call it whatever you want. Four, five. Side pass. Yeah, side pass. Do you watch soccer, Brian? All the time. What's your favorite team? Arsenal. Arsenal. Hmm. Are they good? And one more. Uh, not this year. No? And then the last one, we're going to take our leg, our straight leg, we're going to flex the foot, and we're going to kick behind. So there's three, four, kick behind, five, six, seven, eight. 
nine, 10. And then the last one, other side. So flex the foot, straighten the leg, and then when you get back here, kick behind. I think my leg was bent when I did the other side, but it doesn't matter, just kick behind. Stand up tall, that's good. Hold on if you have to. Four more, four, three, two, one. Good work. We're still doing our hips, believe it or not. You might think, no, you're not. And Brian, come on back here and you can pick one of these boards and I'll pick one too. Let me, I'll pick um, the boards with no screws or you can't see the screws. Here's mine. So what I'm doing here is I'm putting one foot in front of the other, toe to heel, and I'm going forward, and I'm looking down to make sure I'm doing it right, and I'm on the same board. It's called, this exercise is called walk the plank. Which we're doing. Which we're doing, and it's great for your hips and your core muscles. Good, I've come to the end, so I've got to go back when I get up here and stay on the plank so i'm looking down at my feet it's not easy i'm wobbling that means my core muscles need more work stay on the plank and one more good 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 easy right brian no good now what we're going to do here and this is really important we're going to do the same thing going at any speed you want stay on the plank but look straight ahead and don't look down and if you go off the plank that's okay just try to stay on it and don't look down because when you're walking down the street this is where you're looking straight ahead to see what's coming if you look down it won't be good for your back and you're not working your core muscles as much if you're looking down you're looking straight ahead even though we're walking backwards And one more. So it doesn't matter how many steps you take. I try five or 10, depending on where I'm walking. And if I don't have a, um, a plank, I can pretend. Just pretend there's one there. Or put your... Um, Presentation thing. Yeah, put something down there so you can walk on it. Maybe a cord from your kimono or something and try to walk on that or a piece of tape or I don't know. Anyway, but here, here we go with the, the third one. Same thing, Brian, except this time you're going to cover one eye with one, one of your hands. Mm. So here I go. I just will try and see how strong my eye is. Over here. Are we looking down on the board? Yeah, don't look down unless you really have to, but keep the eye covered and see how you make it. Harder, right? <laughs> almost impossible. Almost impossible. Well, you know what? I, my eye, my left eye is pretty strong, so I didn't wobble too much, but I got to go back yet. Whoa. Whoa. I'm not faking this. It is hard. And one more step for that one. And then I'll try the other side and see if this... By the way, you have... They're called proprioceptors and they keep you from falling over and they're muscles and you have the ones that are inside your body close to your spine you know like your multifidus and transverse abdominis but you have outside proprioceptor balance muscles too like your eyes your ears your nose and your mouth and your fingers your senses so the most um, powerful one of them all is your eyes if you didn't have your eyes, you'd have a lot of trouble with balance. Yeah, that's why you see people who are blind walking down the street with a stick. Okay? Walking down the street. So anyway, that's why we're working on this and we're covering the other eye this time. And we're going to see how strong the proprioceptors are in your eye that you've got open. Here we go. I'm looking straight ahead to make it even harder instead of looking down. That seems to be okay. That eye's okay this morning. Try going back when we're ready. This is not easy, folks. No. In fact, I think the little steps, the baby steps, are harder than the bigger steps. If we walk backwards with our legs farther apart, it might not be so hard. Okay. And then the last comment on that one is, what do you think you would do next? Both eyes would be shut. 
No. And you'd be doing it like this. My eyes are shut. I'm not cheating. Let's just not cheat. And you go, what the heck? I'll pull over. Right. It's like, it's just way too hard. We're not there yet, but if we work on the other exercises leading up to it, we'll get there. Yeah. Okay. And then one more thing for the hips and for balance. Just take your hand and put it out straight in your arm, straight in front of you, and get your thumb up there so you can see your finger now. Got it? Because remember, we want to work the proprioceptors in our eyes. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the, I'm going to look straight ahead and my head is not going to move and I'm going to take the arm out to the side like this, but I got to be watching my thumbnail. As soon as I can't see my thumbnail, I stop. Look straight ahead. And I'm ready. What about there, Brian? Is that about it? Okay, then we're going to come back slowly. Yeah. Keep your eye on your thumbnail. Like sometimes when I'm doing this, I, I forget what I'm doing. <laughs> and then I and go keep going and stop and then go up, straight up. Keep your head straight ahead. I'm holding on to my chin so I don't move my head because I cheat sometimes. I'm just using my eyes and then I'm coming down. I'm going to go all the way down to the bottom, but don't move your head. Just use your eyes and then back up to the middle and stop. Good. Try the other side. So, so I hold my chin. By the way, I didn't make this up. There have been... Sometimes I wonder. No, there are people out there researching yeah. all this stuff and that's where I get it. So I'm holding my chin so I don't move my head and I don't cheat. And here I go, so out to the side. Look straight ahead, but... I mean, look straight ahead with your head, but look at the thumbnail with your eyes. Okay, and then slowly come back. See, when you do it slower, you can focus. And then go up. And then down. And then come back up. Good. And then the other half of that is put it out there one more time. Now we're not going to move our arm at all, but we're going to move our head, but we're going to focus on the nail. So I'm going to look away, to one side with my head. Where the hell is it? There it is. Sorry for the language. There, and I go the other way and see if I can keep my eyes on the fingernail. How do you feel in the neck there, Brian? It's stretching. Yes. Go back to neutral and go up with your head. And go down. Oh, no, no, no. Alright, and the other side. So I don't move my hand. Don't move my finger now, I just move my head. Go one way or the other. Keep your eye on the nail. Go across neutral and to the other side. Some people write the, a letter of the alphabet on their fingernail with a marker. Or they write it on a piece of masking tape and then they stick it on their fingernail. Or a word, you know, like COVID or something. Okay, got that? So that's all about balance in your in your um, hips. We're gonna do some weights for a minute here, Brian. So what do you got today? I, I'm gonna use threes. I got fours. So I got heavier if you want. No, this is good enough because we're gonna do a little circuit with the weights, which means we're gonna do a bunch of exercises and then we're gonna repeat them. Right? And we're going to use the bottom part of our body, even though our weights are in the top part of our body. So when we get into the goalpost position and we push up, we're going to lift our knees up. Right? So come on, Brian, let's go. we got to do 10 of these. Three. So this is an overhead press. And we've done this many times. Our form is perfect. We're not falling over and we're doing one more after this and we're not going to stop we're going to just bring them together and cross our legs over and tap on the other side and do a pec press so keep the arms nice and high there so i'm tapping to make it a little bit harder and work the bottom part of my body too patula clark downtown that's right George Costanza went downtown in Seinfeld looking for something. He didn't know what he was looking for, though. One more. 
on each side, one, two, and then without stopping, put the feet together and do the little shrimp squat, push the knees forward, and the Dairy Queen dip, the forearm dip. Just five more, five, three, two, one. Good, now we can have a drink. Just because it's getting hot. He was thinking in yesterday. Yeah, and we're outside and it's only 9.30 in the morning. But it's Canada Day, and I love Canada, and I'd never live in any other country, no matter what people say about Trudeau. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> now our legs are apart, and we just, with our arms, you just hug that big tree. So we have to lean forward to do that, stick our bum back, and bend at the knees, of course. So it's kind of like a squat, but we're working our shoulders and all kinds of arms uh, parts. Yeah, just four more. Hug the tree. Four, three, two, one. Good, bring your feet together. And as you tap out to the side, do your fly. One, see my arms are bent. And as I lift my bent arms up, I squeeze my shoulder blades together. Of course, I'm tapping out to the side for balance. Might as well work those core muscles inside my body and I'm using my eyes, my proprioceptor balance muscles in my eyes. I'm also using my ears to listen to the music and that's part of balance too. And one more, good. You ready? All right, here's the next one. Put the legs out and just pull it up and do a little bit of a squat with the chin. Reach here, up, yes. Notice I'm doing these in groups of three. And I'm taking a little break in between to get some more water into my body. And one more, we get another drink. That's six we've done. They start five, this is. <laughs> my favorite music, but maybe that's because of my age, I don't know. Okay, you ready? So now we're gonna do the bicep curl. So of course my elbows are glued to my sides and I'm down here and I'm up here. But why not just do a little heel dig to work the core muscles and the lower body at the same time. That's already three, seven more. I hope you're there and I hope you're having fun. Bring a friend next time. How do you do that? You, just, you send them the link. I don't know what you do. And tell them to do it. Or bring them over. You can have, I'm at Brian's house. There's only two of us here. One more, I forget how many this was. Good. I put my feet together and as I step back like this, I gotta get my elbows up as high as my shoulders without going like this. So I just lift my arms up and kick back and sometimes when I'm doing this, one, two, see my arms, my elbows are down. I want my elbows up, but I don't want to squeeze my shoulders into my ears. I want to relax my shoulders just to the triceps on the back of the upper arm and tap back. So that's only five more to go. Four, three, two, one, good. You gotta do one more, right? Yes. We're gonna take them together, put them straight over our head, keep our arms as straight as possible and as close to our head as possible, and then we're gonna lower it down. But here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna put our feet together and we're gonna come up on the balls of our feet as we lower it. So the arms are straight, up on the balls of our feet, the weights go back. It's still a tricep exercise. Why would we do two different exercises for the triceps? Because those muscles are special and they need double the attention. 
So if you're ever doing a tricep exercise, do twice as many as you did the biceps. One more. Good, 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 good. Uh, no, I don't think it's time for a drink yet. What we're gonna do is I'm gonna put both in the same hand, but you can have them in separate hands. And remember when we did this reaching thing with our heels? Well, that's how my feet are. So one is at a 45, one straight ahead. I've got them both in the same hand. I'm leaning on my quad, not on my knee, and I'm rowing. Like row, row, row your boat. Right. Four, five, I'm looking straight down. Six, seven, eight, nine, 10. Now down here, I don't move my feet, but I come off my knee with my forearm and I straighten up and I reach and look behind and straighten my arm. And then when I come back down, I touch the weight and come up, stand up, turn, twist, reach. Yes. Working lots of body parts. Lots of muscles. Four more. Now, some seniors that I talked to said, instead of doing sets of 10 of everything, or about 10, they only do three, which is okay. They'll eventually get to more. Good, now I'm gonna switch sides. So I'm standing up here for a sec. Switch the weights. If you don't want to use weights, don't use weights. Your, your arm is a weight. Now, where's my heels? They're lined up. One foot straight ahead, one's in the 45. Lean on my quad and row, row, row your boat. That's a hard song to hear. Is it the Travelers? Who's singing it? Here I go, tap, stand up, don't move my feet, twist and reach behind. That's it, go all the way down when you're ready. Tap, stand up, reach behind. Or oh, reach behind and nice and high too. Use your eyes, your proprioceptor core eye muscles. And watch the weights and don't fall over. Just do two more. And one more. And then we can have a drink. All right, drink time. Not done yet, almost so. Okay. So they, I'm gonna use two, you can only use one, you can use none, but I'm gonna put my feet apart, wider than my shoulders. I'm gonna lean over and put them, the weight in between. I pretend it's a kettlebell. That's like one of those great big heavy balls with a handle, a kettlebell. I just, I don't have one of those and I can't afford them. So I hold something that's heavy. That expensive? Yes, yeah, so I've got my legs really straight, but I'm gonna lift my body up to here where the weights are straight out. And it's all about the hips, but my I don't bend my knees. So it's a, th it's a hip thing. I th throw my hips forward and that propels my arms up. Instead of thinking it the other way, it's not lifting your arms with the weight and your body follows, it's the other way. You're using your hips and you're going push. It's a hip thrust push. Yes. Yes. Forward. Yes, forward, and one more, one more for luck, good. Now I'm gonna stand up straight, bring the weights over my head, and then when I come down, I am gonna bend my legs at the knees, and I'm gonna do a squat and swing up in between, and look up, don't put your head down, look up. A full squat there for, me is different from everybody else because we're all different as long as i look up my feet aren't moving but they're pushing down into the floor so i can be stable 
two more. Good. Have a drink? So what I think we'll do is to make this into a circuit and repeat the whole thing. We're going to do two of each exercise. We're not stopping for any water. We're, we might slow down in between, but we're not going to stop and take a break. And we're going to go it from the back to the front. So we have to do the squat swing first. We'll do two of them. So bring our arms up here and we'll do two of them. So we come down and do one, two. Good. Then we bend over, hang the weights down and we thrust up and do one just to there, two. And then we're into the row, row, row your boat. Doesn't matter what side. And do one row. Another row and then stand up and reach overhead with a twist. Tap. And number two. And then switch sides. So we roll twice. One. Two. And then we stand up. Come back down and tap. One more time. Up. And then I think we were doing this one. Overhead. So either your feet are far wide apart as you lower and you come up on the balls of your feet or you can bring them together. So as I go down with my weights, I go up with my heels. One, two, good. And then get your legs shoulder width apart. Hinge a little bit here at the hips. Get your elbows up and go one, press back, two. And then we'll do the bicep on the front with the heel digs. So it's one, two. Do two more, Brian. One, two. Um, what was next? We're going backwards. I think we had to, I think we had to, let's do this one, the fly, right? Do we have a tree? We're getting to that one's, that one's before this one. So we'll do this fly first. So it's one, two. We'll do it again. So it's one, two. Good, now we get our feet wide apart and we hug the tree twice. So we reach out and hug the big tree. One, two. And then, this is all about your brain. I know we started with the press and then we did this. And then we did the, let's do the dips. Feet together, Dairy Queen dips. So one, two. Right, remember this one? Go close. This one? Peck press. Do that again. One, two. Let's do the Dairy Queen dip again. So one, two. And then the goal post overhead press. So it's one, let's do four of these. Two, three, four. Good. Put those weights down. Pick up your orange, Brian. Because when I was doing the shoulders, I forgot this this exercise. And I brought the lemon and he's got an orange, so it's important. There's two exercises here, but this is the uh, teacup because it's like a cup and a saucer with some water in the, in the cup and you, when you do it, you try not to spill it. But we're trying to do this just with an orange or a lemon. So I'm gonna go way out here and go over my head and come around, keeping the lemon pointing up to the sun, swing it in front of my body and then go back the way I came. So under that way, over my head and back to where I started. And again, over and under and out, inside, Working my back and my shoulders. Some people can even do this with one in each hand at the same time. I couldn't do this with my eyes shut. No, you'd fall over? No, I'd be all screwed up with what we're doing. Oh, here. so you need those proprioceptor balance muscles to keep track. Yes. Yes. That's why you got to do that thumbnail thing. 
even though you could be sitting down doing the thumbnail, you don't have to be standing up. You could be watching TV and stop and pause whatever you're doing and try the other side. So we go way out here and we come way overhead, keeping the, the lemon or the teacup to the, to the sky and swing in front. Then we come back around. So I'm gonna to try to imagine this is a road. Where is my lemon going? And then my lemon's got to go home. So this is a shoulder exercise, but it's also balanced too. I feel lots of muscles working for this one. <laughs> okay. I'm lost. <laughs> You're lost. Let's stop that. And we'll do one more exercise before we go down on the mat. And uh, maybe we could go into the shade somewhere. But anyway, let's try this. So here, here's the challenge. You're going to just stand here. You're going to throw it up and catch it 10 times. Hold on a If you drop it, you got to start over. you got to get 10 times in a row without dropping it. Now, here's the challenge. If you want, you could throw it up higher and catch it. That's riskier, right? Or you can throw a little wee ones. I don't care, but do 10. I'll count to myself. You count to yourself. Let me know when you're done. You guys watch. Make sure Brian and I don't cheat. You got 10? Yeah. He's switching sides, good. This is my weak side too. And it might seem stupid, but it isn't. It's good for the... Uh... It's good for everything, but you know, here's what I just want you to know. I can throw it like that. I can throw it up higher and move to catch it if I have to. Or I can do it as a squat. So I throw it up and I don't catch it until it's down lower, almost at the floor. Like a baseball player. Yeah. Great exercise. But we're not quite down. We've got to do it one more time like this. We've got to throw it up and catch it with the other hand. So that's one. That's two. That's three. That's four. Five. Eight, nine, ten. Good, you put that away. Now, we're gonna to go to the mats. So Brian and I are going to get down on our mats and um, he's gonna be at the front because it's shadier. Move his in a little bit. And there are ways to get down safely, but you know what? You get down today, whatever way you can, and I'm sure it'll be a safe way. So let's see if Brian can get down there. He's no. going to get on his hands and I knees. I have to use something. Yeah. To He's going to be on his hands and knees. Support. See, he's using a table to get down. That's good. All right, now walk. Back up so you're in the middle of the mat. You're on your hands and knees. Okay. Yeah. Okay. No, no, no. So he's. I'm going to just point out a few things. His shoulders are above his hands that's important okay his his hands are lined up with his knees so his knees are apart as much as his hands are apart so it's like it's like a like geometry okay now what he's going to do is he's going to look up that's a neck thing when he looks up and that's a trapezius muscle that's doing the looking up you know the one the trans, trapezius muscle that's in your neck and your shoulders so he looks up and as he looks up he lets his belly go down and we call that the cow so <laughs> even if your belly doesn't go down very much stick your bum in the air stick your head up and then your belly should sag a little bit okay and then when you've sort of felt the cow that's the cow then he brings his hips forward and arches his back so it's round puts his chin down toward his chest and he rounds his back out and that's called the cat so you feel that and then you go, okay, so I'm gonna go back to the cow. That means my head is up, my bum is up, and my belly is down. And then I go back into the cat whenever I'm ready. So I round my back, you know, like I'm hissing. My arms are really straight. My head is down. And when I'm ready, I go back into the cow one last time. So that head up, bum up, belly down and then I go into the, the cat which means hips forward round the back and chin down to the chest good now I want him to
put his big toes together and get his knees farther apart. Then reach way out with his palms to the front and then push his hips back into his heels. And when he does that, his whole torso, including his face, comes closer to the mat. So his hips are back, he's pushing his hips back and then he relaxes a little bit. And then he tries it again. So my arms are getting a great reach, a great straight stretch there, my shoulders, my back, my hips. So my big toes are together, my knees are wide apart, my hands are way out in front. Okay, and then I'm gonna straighten, that. that's called, by the way, let's do it one more time. That's called the resting child, if you have to have a name for it. He come back up. Now don't move anything except your toes. Put them behind your knees. Like straighten your, your legs there a little bit. And then bring your body forward and your belly button toward the mat and lift your head up a little bit and do a cobra. And then relax that whole thing. And then do it again when you're ready. So my toes are apart, lined up behind my knees. And my head goes up and my belly goes down and I'm arching my low back. But I'm not holding it for very long. I'm just going from neutral to the, okay. So now we'll do two um, resting child cobras. So I'm gonna put my big toes together for the resting child, push my hips back, my armpits come close to the ground. And as I come up, I put my toes behind my knees and I go forward as far as I can without hurting anything and bring my belly and my hips toward the mat and look up. And then I go back and put my toes together into the resting child. And I do it at any speed I want, but slower is better. Straighten out my toes there and bring my hips to the mat and my head up. Good. Good work. Now in the table position here, by the way, when I'm at home doing this by myself, I have a rubberized kitchen mat that I use in front of my sink. Yeah. And that's the one I'm on because this, even though the deck is soft, it's hard, it's hard on my knees. It's hard on my knees. It's right. so we're not gonna, doubling this up. Yeah, we're, yeah, maybe we'll do that. I'm going to double mine up too because I don't want to hurt my knees it's any pretty. more than I have to. As long as your knees are padded. There, mine's doubled and doubled. We should get some. Ouch. That's better. Oh my god. We should get those what the construction people wear. Yeah. So just so you can see me a little bit better, I'm gonna just turn around the other way. Okay. So I'm in the table position again. Okay, this is just a downward bridge. I'm in the table position. My my hands are below my shoulders and my knees are below my hips. And I'm gonna lift my right hand out straight. And take my left foot and straight, straighten it out and put my toe on the ground. And hold it. And go, hey, that's not so bad. And then bring my hand without touching the floor and my knee without touching the floor. Bring it in and brush the floor and touch my hand to my knee and then straighten it out again. Put my toe on the ground and my hand out and bring it in again. Brush the floor without the knee or the leg touching bring it in and the same with the arm do one more time good put it down bring everything back that is tough especially in the hot sun so i'm going to do one more other side so the arm is straight out right the opposite leg is straight out with my toe on the ground what are we working by the way folks we're working our low back our lumbar spine so i'm in this position i'm thinking i can hold this or I can do a sweep. That means I bring my arm into my knee and touch it. Don't let anything touch the ground there and straighten it out again. And then do it again when you're ready, touch. It's a sweep and last sweep. Hand comes to the knee, touches. Straighten out, back to the table. And when you're ready, I want you to just sit down. Oh my God, that's brutal. It's brutal when you're old, right Brian? Now, if we were 20 or 30 or even 40, this would be a snap. And Brian's like... Ancient. Ancient, and I'm old, and he's ancient. Oh, my God. So we've done? Done. Are you kidding? 
we're going to just do a few more just because of the sun. I had lots planned, but it's just way too hot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to lie on my back. You can watch me if you want, but I'm going to lie on my back. So I got to get down there without clunking my head. All right. And then, oh, that's good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my hands underneath my low back. So that means knuckles touch the low back. Not under my hips, under my low back where the arch is. So my legs are bent, feet are flat, head is touching the floor, right? I'm getting a sunburn here. So what I'm going to do is straighten one leg, flex the foot, tighten the leg, and then lift my head off the ground a little tiny bit. So I looked this up and it's a low back exercise by Stuart McGill, the famous back doctor from the University of Waterloo. Put my head down, switch sides. So bend, flat leg, flatten the foot, straighten the other leg, flex the foot and tighten up the leg and then lift your head up a little tiny bit and count one, two, three or whatever. Some people could hold it up there for a 10 count. And down goes my head, one more on each side. So I straighten the leg, flex the foot, tighten everything on that side. And when I'm ready, I lift my head up. Three, two, one. Put my head down, straighten the other leg, flex the foot and lift my head up just a little bit. My head's going straight up. Three, two, one, down, good. Take my arms out, oh yes. One more exercise before we get up even though I had a lot planned, but look at that sun. Okay, so here I go. I'm gonna put my hands, like my knuckles underneath my, my hips, my low back where the bone is, my bum area, okay? Good. And when I do that, I can lift my hips off of my hands to get my hands out, bring my hands over my head and touch my fingers to the ground and come back with my arms and put them underneath my hips and put my hips down. So when I'm ready, I lift my hips up, take my hands out over my head, touch the ground with my fingers and come back and put them under my hips and put my hips down and just do one more. This is a bridge. Lift your hips up, take your hands out, reach over your head and come back and put them down. Good. Now there's all those exercises of you know, one leg is straight and one leg is bent and you're pulling it in. There's one leg uh, is straight and one leg is bent and then you're straightening it up. There's all those exercises we were going to do, but that'll have to wait because it's just too hot down here. So what I'll do is I'll take my hands out. I'll turn on my side. And when I'm ready, I'll push myself up. Where's my water? I can't even find my water. <laughs> anyway. There's one little cloud up there. That's it. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> so I'm going to get into a seated position here and I'm going to take my heels and bring them as close to my bum as I can and grab around my shins and straighten my back and stretch. So my head's in neutral and I'm just pushing my hips forward and pulling my shins in. That straightens out my back and I'm just holding it for a stretch. Yeah. What happened to the music? Gave up the ghost. <laughs> well, Canada Day, you know. What are you going to do for the rest of the day? I've got a project I'm doing, working on, and then I'm going to finish that. And then I'm going to my daughter's for supper. Oh, wow. That sounds like a great idea. I spend most of my time out in this yard. Me too. I go into my yard when I want to relax, when I want to de-stress. What's the best part of your yard, Brian? Hold that stretch. What's the best part? All the plants. Yeah. What's your favorite plant uh, this week? The, uh, what's those ones with the big, I've forgotten. I'm, I remember seeing it. The one. hostas. Hostas. The big ones with the big elephant ear. Yeah, and leaves. ferns, hostas and ferns. Hostas I love them. and ferns. Yeah. I know all these plants put in oxygen into the air and that's what you need especially when there's a virus like COVID floating around. So the more you're outside and the more you're near plants, trees, plants, flowers, whatever, the healthier it's gonna be for your lungs. Okay, now that's enough. We've, hold, we've held this stretch for two minutes. 
so that's good. We've stretched lots of body parts just sitting like this, but we have to get up. So you can, how are you going to get up, Brian? That's a good question. I'm going to watch. So he's going to turn over maybe. Back to the, oh, you know, he's in the downward, <laughs> do, he's in the downward dog, folks. <laughs> Anne would be proud of him at the Y, because she teaches yoga. And he's go. using a little table, but he's straightening up slowly and standing in neutral Ooh. the best he can. So here's how I'm getting up, Brian, because I've practiced this. I know. Right. I'm going to use my hands to get myself into a squat. So my feet have to be shoulder width apart. I push my bum off the floor. I use my hands to get myself into a low squat. Now this exercise is just about as good as a push-up. Just sitting like this all day long. You know, well, maybe for 10 seconds. I mean, my wife said she can sit this way for four minutes. And she doesn't even have her hands touching the ground. She's like this for four minutes. That's like doing a push-up or a squat. The best two exercises on the planet. And then I'm going to lift my hips and then slowly come up. Very good. And then what I could do is go, hey, that's an exercise in itself. That's I can cool. go into a squat with my hips high and then I can lower my hips, hinge them this way, and now I'm in the squat. And I can go home. Maybe I'll lift my hips and stand up. There's an exercise all on its own. You miss that as you get older, you can't do it. No, I know. I don't want to ever get as old as you, Brian. <laughs> on the other hand, I do want to live until I'm 110. Yeah. Right. So we got to do one more thing. It's called meditating. So can you just, can you, I don't know if this is hard for you. Can you just sit down on something? Yeah. I'm going to sit here and I'll turn the camera so that they can see you. I'm just sitting on a step here. Okay. And I, I'm going to take my my hands here and I'm going to tap on the sides of my my palms here. I'm just going to tap. I can lightly tap or I can whack it. It doesn't matter. And I want you to pay attention to how clear your eyes are going to become. Like how younger you're going to feel as you tap. And you can tap this side and this side or just one side. It doesn't matter. Okay? And you can go lightly or you can hit it. So that's position one, but you're trying to get more energy and feel younger. So now we're going to tap right here with both hands, right where the eyebrows come into the nose, right there. Tap in there. Yep. And you can tap as long as you want or as short as you want. And then you're going to tap the other side of the eyebrows, not on your temples, but right here. You're going to tap. It's tough to do with glasses. Yeah. If you had glasses on, you could take them off. Now we're going to tap the cheekbones. There's the bones right below the eyes, right in that bony area. So what's this going to do for This us? is going to give you more energy to all your body parts, and you're going to feel younger. Wonderful. Yeah. And after there, you're going to go below your nose, right in here. You can use one hand. You don't have to use two, but one hand right in there. So the person that had too much time in his hands that come up with that, this, who was who? I forget his name, but I'll, I'll put it in the description when I make the video so you know the guy. And I'll even put the link so you can go and see somebody who's a professional showing you how to do this. Now, below the lip here, between your chin and your li lower lip. And then your um, collarbone here, the soft spot right here right in there like Tarzan went ah why did he do that he was about to jump on a vine and swing through the jungle so he yelled out Tarzan so well, he went, jump, ah, on, what jump on Jane or jump on Jane <laughs> Jane needed help a lot of times and I think she came from the big city and the plane crashed and she ended up in the jungle and he saved her and they became Where was she from London or yeah, New York somewhere well, New York I think if you're American it's New York okay and then under your armpit somewhere in there and since you got two arms, do the other side. Don't hurt yourself, and then finish it off with the top of your head. I think there's nine spots. Let me just count again. So we started off with here, that's one. one. And then it went to the inside of the eyebrows, two, two three. three, cheekbones, four, four five, five six. six, seven, eight, nine. There's nine of them. And it'll be in the description. It's just called tapping, and I'll have a link to the expert. And you know what? I feel much better when I do that. Good. 
some people try to say nice things about themselves while they're doing it. Like, I'm the best gardener in the world. Yes, I am. Or, you know, I'm the best gardener. And they do the whole garden thing. I'm the best in the world. Really? And no one's with them. You don't have to worry about bragging or anything. But you can say, you're allowed to say nice things about yourself. Why not? Because in a time of stress, especially COVID and what's going on in the world with politics and everything else, it's time to be nice to yourself. And so, uh, that's about it. What do you call all this, this today's lesson or class? Well, it's going to be called Exercises for Seniors, the full workout. I was going to call it the really full workout because I had a lot of uh, exercises to do. But because of the sun, maybe I'll just call it the full workout. So it's exercises for seniors, the full body workout. Right. Something like that. Okay. I'm sure my daughter, who likes to tell me how to do things, because she's got a wife like that. Yeah, um, she'll tell me something different. But uh, it'll be posted before dark today, and this is Canada Day, and I'll see you next time. And Brian will see you next time too, right, Brian? All right.